What if I told you the electric vehicle revolution didn't start in Silicon Valley but in Beijing? While the West was still marveling at luxury Teslas, China was already laying the groundwork to make EVs cheap, fast, and everywhere. By 2024, nearly half of all electric vehicles sold in the world will come from China. Not bad for a country that barely made cars 30 years ago. But how did it happen? In the West, EVs are a statement. Luxury, sleek, eco-chic. In China, they're just normal. You'll see school teachers, delivery drivers, retirees, everyday people behind the wheel of EVs. Why? Because they're practical, cheap, and save serious money. One driver in Shanghai told us, I haven't bought gas in three years. Why would I? This wasn't an accident. It was a playbook, a vision. And it started decades ago. Back in 2001, buried inside a dusty five-year plan, China quietly planted the seeds of an EV revolution. Then in 2007, a man named Wan Gang, an engineer trained in Germany, persuaded the government to go all in. His pitch was bold. Don't compete with the West on gasoline cars. Leap ahead. Skip the combustion engine era entirely. And the state listened. They didn't leave it on the market. They mobilized. They funded it. They planned. EVs weren't a trend. They were a national mission. From 2009 to 2023, China poured $231 billion into building the EV ecosystem. Not just factories, but everything. Battery firms, startups, research labs, charging stations, and even consumer perks. We're talking free license plates, cheap electricity, and cash incentives to trade in your gas guzzler. While other countries debated the ethics of subsidies, China built a launch pad. And then came the industrial juggernaut. BYD, once a humble battery maker, is now the world's top EV producer. Meanwhile, Catel supplies one-third of all EV batteries globally. And if you're wondering about charging, China built the largest public EV charging network on Earth, especially in cities where a charging station is never more than a few blocks away. This wasn't just about building cars. It was about owning the whole supply chain. At the same time, startups like Xping, Neo, and others were turning cars into gadgets. Think battery swaps in three minutes, built-in video streaming, and AI driving features that felt like sci-fi, all at mainstream prices. Young Chinese consumers see EVs the way the West sees iPhones, sleek, fun, futuristic. It's not just transportation, it's tech you show off. And now, China is going global. BYD, Xpeng, and others are exporting low-cost EVs to Europe, Southeast Asia, and beyond. Their prices undercut legacy automakers by thousands of dollars. That sparked fear and tariffs. The US, EU, and Canada have already started throwing up protectionist walls. The West didn't expect China to win this fast. With these computers on wheels rolling into foreign markets, governments are worried. Are EVs collecting user data? Could they be surveillance tools? It's deja vu, Huawei, TikTok, now BYD. And while Chinese firms deny any wrongdoing, national security debates are back in the headlines. So here's the dilemma. Do countries welcome cheap EVs and accelerate climate progress or block them to protect tech sovereignty? For now, China holds the advantage. It controls the minerals, the batteries, the factories, and it's riding the wave of global bans on gas-powered cars coming by 2035. Unless the rest of the world catches up fast, 
We might all be driving Chinese EVs whether we like it or not. China's electric vehicle takeover wasn't a coincidence. It was a masterclass in strategic planning, industrial power, and long-term vision. While the West let the market decide, China designed the outcome it wanted and got it. This isn't just about cars. It's about who leads the future. And like it or not, China's already there.